Hello, folks. Welcome to Feel Good Fridays. Um, allow us to introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is RJ. I'm one of the counseling interns at the Counseling Services Center this semester. And with me, I have... I'm Michaela, and I am also one of the counseling interns at the Counseling Services Center on campus. Awesome. And today, what we're going to do is, um, you know, this week is midterms week, um, or at least in this case, the halfway point of the semester. And I know a lot of students right now are sort of, a lot of you are having issues with stress and anxiety related to midterms, preparing for them and whatnot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this time to sort of just go over some tips that you can use to help yourselves through these times. And I have a checklist, so I find it. I guess we'll start with study tips. Um, the first bullet point I have here is look ahead to understand your to understand your assignments due dates. Yeah, I like that one because I think, you know, if you make a plan looking ahead to see what you have due for the week or over the whole month, it's better than just, you know, looking every single day and then realizing you have something that you need a lot of time to work on because I think we've all been there before. Absolutely. I definitely have, uh, <laughs> uh, you get personal, I definitely have definitely procrastinated. I didn't really look at things ahead of time. Um, you know, keeping track of your syllabus, uh, writing down dates, um, writing down what days and what times even can be helpful because you can get a medicine of what's going on. Um, you know, like Michaela said, if you know you have a huge assignment due in weeks, start early. It's definitely helpful. It'll definitely ease the anxiety so we can ask questions. For sure. Alrighty then. Uh, next is set time to study and work in batches. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that too because I've heard some people say that they'll just like start working and they'll just work until they're like completely fatigued and they can't mentally do anymore. Um, but like you said, like you might have questions, you might not have been able to figure something out. So I feel like for me, it does work really well, like setting times, um, maybe setting a timer or something and saying like, I'm gonna work for an hour and then I'm gonna take a break for a half hour or something. Yeah, I actually agree a lot with what you said because I feel like, you know, our brains are just not wired to be working excessively nonstop for that many hours at a time. I feel like that's why for longer classes, like, you know, the classes that we take, you know, we often get breaks, uh, probably on purpose because after so long, our minds just get tired, we get restless, and then we're not, we're not able to focus or retain the information as well. Um, yeah, sure, that's a good point. You know, like we are given breaks when we're in normal classes on campus and stuff, so it's not, you shouldn't be hard on yourself if you take a break because you would always be getting one if you were with your teacher. Absolutely. I'm thinking um, the rule of thumb, some people say 30 minutes of work, 10, five to 10 minutes, and then another 30, 10 minutes break. What would you say your time frame would be, Michaela? Yeah, I would say I work like, I'll work between like 30 and 60 minutes, depending on what's going on, if I got on a roll or something. Um, and then, yeah, I'll take like a 20 minute break, probably. Awesome. So take breaks, folks. Yeah. Don't take it too long and forget. Uh, ooh, this one is probably, this has always been the most helpful for me. Touch, and that is touching base with your professors. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. Um, and I actually find most of the professors really understanding. Um, and honestly, even if they can't accommodate what you're asking for, at least they know what you have going on and they might have an alternative solution. Um, I always used to be scared to do that or to ask for mm -hmm. or anything. I would just like uh, work way too hard at it and get it done and then it wouldn't even be done well. So I think it's really important, um, you know, just reach out respectfully and 
kindly with the knowledge that you might have to say no, but I always think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. You know, what I usually tell students and really anybody in general is what do you got to lose? You know, if you need help, you have questions, you know, that's what they're there for. Answer questions as, you know, as much as possible. Obviously, there's certain circumstances where they might not be able to answer because it could be a test question or stuff like that. But, you know, like I said before, you have nothing to lose and the whole world to gain. Yeah. So. Yeah, for sure. Even if they have to say no, they might still have, like, another idea for you or another way to make things easier for you in the future. Absolutely. Anything else you wanted to mention to that? No, I mean, I think just sort of making sure you have the right time, mm -hmm. um, space. I know we're going to talk a little about that. Um, and just asking for what you need, I think, is really beneficial. Absolutely. Oh, and also know your professor's office hours, even though oh, it's kind of a thing. Um, there's always emails if they have if they have a number that you can call, if they allow that, you know, that's always an option too. Um, in theory, that should, that kind of goes along with number two with the, having the whole syllabus available. So, awesome. So that's it as far as study tips. Now we got organizational, organizational tips. And the first one we have here is get a planner. Yeah. I love that one. And you know, you might be more of like an electronic planner person. You might want an app or you use your Google Calendar or something, or you might just like a paper planner. Um, you might have to troubleshoot, you know, you might get a paper planner and it doesn't work out. So I think just, you know, being kind to yourself when you're trying to figure out how to study and be organized because it's not easy. Right. And you know. And like you mentioned before, you know, getting the planner. Um, I will also add, instead of also, you know, writing due dates and stuff like that, planning things ahead. Um, it may also be good to write down break times, self care, and whatnot, so that way you can get a better sense of what's going on. And um, and and then the other thing is, when I say planner, I mean really anything that's helpful for you for writing down information. It could be a notebook, piece of paper, calendar on your phone, you know, anything that really works. Um, I even use, my little echo dot. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. Yes, I have this thing, set reminders for me, even though I haven't used it in a while, so. Uh, I should practice what I do. <laughs> but yeah, I love this thing. Um, at the very least, I use it for reminders, appointments, even an alarm clock as well. Yeah. So, all right then. Uh, next point keep track of your syllabus. Um, oh, yeah. So, like, I think. Um we were talking about how like some people like to print them out, which is fine. Uh, some people like to save them on their phone or on their computer, but just like make sure you know where it is so you can easily access it. So you're not like going back to the blackboard every time, like, oh my God, where's the folder? Yeah, I definitely agree with you that printing them out can definitely be helpful um, because I don't know, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I look through a syllabus online, I'll look through it and I'll just be like, where is the information? And I'll be like, and I'll kind of glance over it and I realize it. But if it's in front of me, I can get a better representation of what's being yeah. said and whatnot and all those things. For sure. Oh, yeah, and also keep track of updates as well because uh, no syllabus remains the same. <laughs> Yeah, like make sure you check your Blackboard messages, make sure you check your emails. Um, if you think you missed something or, you know, maybe reach out to somebody in class um, through email or something. If you think you missed something, like I literally just had to do that today. So definitely make sure you have people um, 
you know, even if you're on Zoom, it can be hard. If somebody says something like you're interested in, feel free to sort of chat with them. Oh, hey, I like that too. Maybe we could connect in case you have any questions about class. And people usually are like, thank you. Absolutely. You know, and just going back to the whole professor thing and the syllabus thing, you know, if you're if you have a class on Zoom, sometimes you give you even have the option doing private chats directly to the instructor. That's something that you can mm -hmm. ask questions to. Yeah, absolutely. I know I've done it for a class last semester and it's it really helped and they actually got to me right away. So which is really awesome. Uh Keep your class schedule visible. Um, this kind of goes along with the other two points we kind of mentioned. Um, you know, if you feel like the schedule that you currently have is just not really working out for you, make adjustments that would better suit your style and whatnot. What are your thoughts, Michaela? Yeah, like maybe. Um, have it on like a dry erase calendar or a wall calendar like we were saying and some people you know they can remember everything without that but just to sort of take it out of your brain so you don't have to be remembering like wait what day is it what time do I have this or that um just having it somewhere that you can see easily that might be a really nice thing for some people. absolutely I know people in the past, they'll, they'll buy like these gigantic, gigantic whiteboards actually, and they'll have it like on their wall or something of what days to have classes or um, some people might even just put it in their phones or their calendars or whatnot. So there's definitely all kinds of different ways for sure. Uh, so that's it for organizational tips. Uh, the last, so we got two more sections. We got self-care strategies, and then um, we have a breathing technique exercise that we may, that we're gonna, gonna do towards the end. Um, but as for self-care strategies, the first one is set aside minute, minutes to be active as much as possible. Yeah, that's like my favorite one. Um, just taking a walk, um, and then just like standing up and stretching a little bit. Um, that always really, really helps me. And I always have to remind myself, like you might not feel like you have the energy to go do something, but it's actually gonna make more energy in the end. Absolutely, absolutely. I like how you mentioned uh, just getting up and being able to stretch. Um, I strongly encourage that, you know, for the students who are even quarantine and isolation at right now because obvious reasons they can't really leave but you know just getting up being able to you know being able to stretch can be helpful um, you know I know Michaela here is a huge fan of yoga <laughs> absolutely yeah and really just any movement you can do for your body especially if it's you know mindful and um, it can really just help stretch really. Absolutely. Going on walks. Um, if you're on campus, I know the, one of the most popular places that people go to is the lake. Mm -hmm. um, just be able to see that sunset and on Lake Ontario, getting that sense of calming and you know peacefulness. It's very tranquil. And um, yeah, that's definitely one place I recommend going to. Also be careful if you go there though. Yeah, for sure. And just getting outside is great. And even if you can't, for whatever reason, just opening your window, getting fresh air, or even like having a plant. Really yeah. nice. Awesome. Uh, the next one. So the self-disclosure, me and Michaela were actually uh, laughing about this one. Uh, drink at least eight glasses of water each day. Yeah, I think that just sounds crazy. And then we were kind of going back and forth that there might be, um, you know, other calculations that are out there. Um, eight glasses might be way too much for you. It might be right. Um, but just make sure you're, you're drinking enough water and you're staying yeah. hydrated and you're you know, eating regularly. Yeah, pretty much what she said. Um, 
you know, eight glasses. Um, I think we could just chalk it up to stay hydrated. Um, make sure you take it up and, you know, influences, you know, especially if you're not doing well, drink, eat properly, you know, it's flu season, take some vitamin C, orange, drink some orange juice, really to keep yourself hydrated and, you know, you're eating well as well. So, because the mind and body are connected. If we're feeling good physically, we tend to feel a lot better mentally as well. Yeah, yeah. All right, then. Um, this one's a fun one. Uh, make a make a twenty minute playlist of essential tunes. Yeah, that one is fun. Um, yeah, everyone has their own style of music and preference. Um, you know, to help feel calm and relax. Um, I guess my recommendation is figure out what music sort of makes you relax and as you listen to it. Try to pay attention to the sounds. Notice the sounds and feelings around you and what it means. So, what are your thoughts, Michaela? Yeah, um, and even if like you're somebody that's kind of stuck and you don't know what type of playlist you want, you can browse, you know, like on Spotify or Apple Music, um, just like relaxation or good mood or just different types of playlists that are out there, and you can find some new music. Too. Okay. But thank you for bringing up that good point. And um, there's this really cool app, actually, I found recently. It's this, It's called Relaxing Melodies. It's this app where you, okay, you, you, can get it on, you can get it on your Apple phone or an Android phone. What it is is that you have different music options, like just regular sounds, things ranging from guided meditations to bells ringing, thunder cloud sounds, rainfalls, the ocean. Um, if you have a kid, they have a they have a baby session where they actually have lullaby sounds and whatnot, a variety of things. So that could be another way to help sort of become more in tune, mm -hmm. you know, to the sounds around you and become more grounded and mindful. Yeah, that's that sounds awesome. Yes. Oh, and it is free. There is a premium version where you can play it if your phone's like on sleep mode, but uh, you have to pay for that one, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. But I wanted to at least show that out there. Uh, this one is my person. This is out of everything we talked about so far. This one is the one that helps me the most, personally. And that is reach out to friends when you need a break. Yeah. Yeah, I feel the same way. Definitely. It's really nice to have those people that you can just reach out to and say, you know, I'm not feeling the greatest or, you know, even just call to chat. You don't have to say that. Absolutely. You know, I love how we as human beings are able to communicate with each other, being able to reach out to each other, express how we feel, you know, during these times. Know. It's just pretty, pretty amazing, um, you know. And it can, it can, this, and it can be anyone that you feel comfortable with—friends, family, your dog. Yeah. Your pets, they count. They count too. Mm -hmm. uh, fish, really, really anybody, as long as you feel secure and safe and whatnot, whatever that may mean to you. Um, or even reaching out to other resources like counseling services or crisis, uh, online. What would you say? Let's talk. Let's talk. All those things. Yep. Um, am I missing anything else? I don't think so. I think that's pretty much. I think my favorite self care is you know the getting out in nature, being active. I think you. Some pretty good clues. All right, then. So that's it as far as self care strategies. Um, now, Michaela, you said you had a like a quick breathing. Yeah, so, mindfulness exercise. 
Yeah, so what I figured I'd do, and then what we'll do for you guys too, is we'll post a link to like a full guided meditation so you can try that if you want. And I'll just sort of like talk you through a little bit about what this technique is. Um, I'm not going to go through the full guided, but like I said, we'll post a link for you guys. Um, but one uh, relaxation technique that I really like is called progressive muscle relaxation. Ooh, I like that one too. Okay. And it sounds really fancy. And this is really, really great for kids too because it's just fun. And sometimes you look funny when you're doing it. Um, but what you do for progressive muscle relaxation is you would want to get comfortable. So you could do it seated. So this is perfect for anybody to do like at work or during class. Um, nobody even has to know you're doing it if you don't get too crazy with it. Um, but you can also lay down. So if you're somebody that just feels more comfortable laying or um, you know you are doing it at the end of yoga or something like that, you can definitely lay down. And so you're just gonna wanna sort of get yourself in a comfortable seat um, and start sort of taking more mindful breath, meaning just notice your breath, notice how long your inhales and your exhales are. Um, start noticing anywhere you might feel tension in your body. So almost everybody all the time, you know, we can like drop our shoulders a little bit. Um, so that's one place I tend to, you know, draw my attention first. But um, sometimes our whole body is tense and, and we just don't know. So we're sort of just scanning. We don't have to relax it. If we, you know, we can, but we're just scanning our body. We're not really going to do anything about it. We're just noticing. And um, so then I tend to start with my hands and this is the progressive muscle relaxation part. So okay. you sort of draw all your attention to your hands and you're gonna tighten up your hands. You're gonna make this. Um, and just for a few seconds, like as tight as you can, you're gonna hold in the fist and you can hold your breath too while you do that. And then you exhale and you like let your detention in your hands go. And it's really nice because you can feel that difference between like when you're tensed up and when you're relaxed. And that's why kids like it can get to your face, and, like scrunch and tense your face all up and then let it out. Um, but you would do that throughout your whole body. So tensing up your shoulders and your arms, tensing your thigh muscles, and just for a few seconds each, and then you know, taking that deep exhale and letting it out. And you can you can just do it to you know maybe one part of your body that you feel tension with. You could go through your whole body if that felt good for you. Um, but like I said, we'll post a link that has because um, sometimes people draw them out for like, to like a mm -hmm. minute um, meditation. So we'll post a link that has a nice all guided one for you. Um, and it's definitely something that you can also just play around with on your own. Um, and it's really just about you know, taking notice of your breath, um, not judging your thoughts. They're going to be coming and going and just kind of keeping your thoughts on either that muscle tension or that relaxation. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that, Michaela. And, and just, uh, you know, add on to that is, you know, you can, you know, there's longer versions, there's shorter versions, you know, whatever works out for you. Um, and, going, and also to go back to the whole midterm stress thing is that, you know, if you feel comfortable, maybe you could try some of these things, you know, maybe maybe an hour or two before your midterm and whatnot, you know, to sort of release some of that tension and whatnot, because I'll, I'll just close. Uh, midterms, they scare me. They stress me out. <laughs> and sometimes just being able to just sit back and just release all of those tensions going on in your body and all those intrusive thoughts, you know, it can sort of help just become more grounded and more relaxed and more prepared. Yeah, yeah, these techniques are perfect um, to do before a test or even like a balancing pose. Um, so anything where you are, you couldn't be on one leg, but you could, you know, have the wall there. Um, like tree pose or something like that. Like any balancing pose is so good to do before you go into a test or a midterm or something because 
it kind of clears your head and you can't really think about the million things that you're nervous about while you're trying to balance <laughs> on one foot. So mm. it kind of gives you a break. So I like, I love that thought too. And these are great things to do before you start you know, with that task. Interesting, a balance pulse. I never actually thought of it that way. Mm. Yeah, definitely. So you can just like, um, they'll be like really um, pretty simple. Like on YouTube, you can just look up tree pose and, or you can literally just go over the wall, put your hand on the wall and, and like let's kind of get your balance on that on one leg and lift up your other leg. You don't have to hold the wall, but you could. And yeah, just do it for like 10, 20 seconds, however long. Try a couple times and should help clear your head a little bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that, Michaela. And, and if you're in, you know, in the whole, and when, and as you're doing all these exercises, uh, also do it to the point where you don't feel pain, but you feel at least some pressure so that way you can feel that tension as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very, very important point. So you don't want to be like squeezing your fingernails into your hand or anything like that. Definitely not wanting to hurt yourself. You're just, um, just. No, we don't want that. Yeah. Just doing it so you can feel that difference. All righty then. All right. Well, All right. Thank you for tuning in. All right then. Well, thank you for joining me in this discussion, Michaela. And thank you all for joining us as well. Um, I'm pretty sure this is going to be posted somewhere. Uh, I am not 100% sure yet, <laughs> to be completely honest. Um, but yeah. Um, Thank you for joining. And if you have any additional questions, uh, I blocked out time in my schedule on Friday from 12 to 1 um, regarding this. Okay. Any intern, intern uh, I can't talk. <laughs> Midterm yeah. stress. And uh, yeah, or you can just send us an email. Yep. And you can call the counseling center too if you just need some resources or anything. Absolutely. Okay. Thank right. you, everyone.